Latter-day Saints know Doctrine and Covenants 89 is the word of wisdom, but there's a deeper meaning hidden within about the last days when the saints are supposed to flee Zion, the protection they will receive as a result, and from there how long until the second coming. While many people jump right into the do's and don'ts of the word of wisdom, the beginning is very interesting and talks about why we need this in the first place. First, verse 2 makes it clear that this is about our temporal salvation in the last days. It says, To be sent greeting, not by commandment or consent, but by revelation and the word of wisdom, showing forth the order and the will of God in the temporal salvation of all saints in the last days. This isn't a commandment. He is giving us a warning and telling us how we can navigate the last days safely. Verse 3 says that the revelation is a principle with promise. In other words, if we live this principle, again, not a commandment, we get a special promise. It starts getting really good in verse 4, which says, Behold, verily, thus saith the Lord unto you, In consequence of evils and designs which do and will exist in the hearts of conspiring men in the last days, I have warned you and forewarned you by giving unto you this word of wisdom by revelation. We aren't just getting this revelation as a general code of health, but also in consequence of evils and designs which do and will exist in the hearts of conspiring men in the last days. There's going to be some bad stuff that goes down in the last days, and if you live by this principle, you will be protected from these evil and conspiring men. The next several verses are what we focus on most of the time with what we should do and what we shouldn't do, relating to the specific fruits, vegetables, meats, grains, herbs, and beverages. Then, beginning in verse 18, we get the list of promises that come as a result of obedience to this principle. In fact, it lays it out, saying, And all saints who remember to keep and do these sayings, walking in obedience to the commandments, shall receive health in their navel, marrow to their bones. Notice there are, in fact, two requirements here. We need to remember to keep and do these sayings, meaning those principles listed in this section, and walking in obedience to the commandments. So to get the blessings here, we need to be both obedient to the commandments and live the principles of the word of wisdom. Then we start to get into the promises. I think these promises are very specific and listed in this order for a particular reason. And if you follow my logic, I'll show you what I believe is a hidden message pertaining to the timeline of the last days and the second coming of Jesus Christ. Let me explain one method I use to help me find interesting points of doctrine in the scriptures. Oftentimes, similar words are used in the scriptures and other places, such as health in the navel and marrow to their bones. Follow my thought process and context, if you will. Endowed members of the church will likely key into that phrase, which I believe is a clue to whom this is for. This special warning and wisdom is for worthy temple-endowed members of the church. This is for those adopted into the house of Israel and have received the Abrahamic covenant. Verse 19 goes in to say, and shall find wisdom and great treasures of knowledge, even hidden treasures. When the scriptures say this, there may be some hidden treasure right under our nose. Let's see if we can find one of those hidden treasures. Verse 20 says, And shall run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint. Naturally, people think that if they are healthy from living the word of wisdom, they will literally be able to run and not be weary. And in a sense, that's true. Yet I know many faithful LDS that live the word of wisdom and can't literally run and not be weary. Certainly I believe that living this code of health will help you be more healthy, but is there more to it than this? Again, let's look for similar words and context in the scriptures. Let's follow the phrase, run and not be weary, and shall walk and not faint, and find other scriptures that have this phrase. This is the beauty of scripture study in this day and age. You can literally just type that into Google or the church website and find other verses that say this. One that comes up is Isaiah 40, verse 31, which says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Not only are the words nearly identical, but you can read that the context is similar. Isaiah is speaking about the last days. Let's use this linking phrases and context again using another phrase in Isaiah's verse. Have you heard a phrase similar to mount up with wings as eagles? 
It might sound familiar to those that have read the prophecies written in the book of Revelation by John. In Revelation 12, verse 14, and I'm going to use the Joseph Smith translation because it is slightly different and I try to use that every chance I get. It says, Therefore, to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle, that she might flee into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent. Notice that John says the woman is given two wings of a great eagle. This verse is commonly known as the symbolism for the time when the saints will need to flee to Zion in Missouri due to the persecution of the saints. Because I've already done videos on those two subjects, I don't want to repeat it all again, so I'll just put the links here. Those in Zion are then safe for the three and a half year period prior to the second coming of Jesus Christ. That is what's meant by time, times, and half a time. A year and two years and half a year is three and a half years. This is one way that John encodes other parts of his revelation. In Revelation 11.2, he refers to the same period of time, although speaking about what is happening in Jerusalem at that time, as 42 months. Again, in Revelation 13 verses 5 and 7 as well, 42 months is three and a half years. Then in Revelation 11.3 and also in Revelation 12.6, again speaking of the exact same period of time, it talks about being 1,260 days, which is again, guess what, three and a half years. John wasn't the only one who spoke about this period of time. Daniel 12 verse 11 says, And from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Again, about three and a half years and speaking of the exact same period of time in the last days. All of these verses are talking about the three and a half year period of time, also known as the abomination of desolation, when the two witnesses hold back a siege on Jerusalem during this three and a half year period. Sorry to keep doing this, but in an effort to not repeat myself, all of this is discussed in another video if you want to learn more about that. So many of these topics just intermingle and no one wants to watch a straight four hour video. So it is telling that if we are faithful, we will know when we need to flee to Zion. And by doing so, we get the final promise from Doctrine and Covenants 89, that the destroying angel shall pass by them as the children of Israel and not slay them. See, the final plagues that come upon mankind just prior to the second coming mirror those from the time that Moses led the Israelites out of bondage from Egypt. I did a whole video on this, so again, I don't want to repeat all of that, so here is the link if you want to watch that. Plus, there is another one on the great earthquake prior to the second coming that is related to all this as well. But the point is that living the word of wisdom and being true and faithful to the commandments will protect us from the destroying angel, just like the Hebrews were protected from the destroying angel when the Egyptian firstborn were slain. So the hidden message in Doctrine and Covenants 89 is that it offers us protection from evil and conspiring men in the last days, and by being obedient, we will know when to flee to Zion, to escape where the destroying angel shall pass us by as the final plagues destroy the wicked at just prior to the Lord's second coming. At least that is what I found while studying Doctrine and Covenants 89. But remember, this is all just my opinion. And some people will think I'm right on, some people will think I'm nuts, and in reality, those aren't mutually exclusive. Thanks for watching.